No Prime's home stereo series comprises of a preamp, a power amp, and the Link Play based streamer I will review here. The preamp and the power amp I will review later. No Prime is a US based company founded in 2014 and started by teaming up with the OEM factory to buy New Force's high end products assets. In the past I have reviewed both New Force and New Prime products and always found them interesting. So this time I'll take a look at the Stream 9 streamer. Let's start with looking where it finds its place in your stereo. Being a network player, it needs to be connected to your network over a network cable or Wi-Fi. This way it can play music from streaming services, internet radio and when you have a computer or NAS with music stored on it, it can play that too. The digital output of the Stream 9 has to be connected to a digital to analog converter, DAC for short, over AES-EBU, SPDIF, TOSLINK or I2S. The DAC is then connected to an amplifier, in turn connected to loudspeakers or headphones. If your amplifier or AV receiver has a built in DAC, that can be used instead of a separate DAC and amp. Primary functions can be controlled from the infrared remote control. A tablet or smartphone running the free Omnia receiver app is used to select music. Versions of Android and iOS are available in the Play Store and App Store. The Stream 9 is also Rune certified, does AirPlay and Bluetooth. You could use the Stream 9 as input selector by connecting for instance the digital output of your CD player or other digital source to it. You could then use the Stream 9 up sampler and change volume digitally if you like. The entire home stereo series is available in silver and black. The metal housing measures 390 by 360 by 80 mm and weighs 4 kilos. On the front we see only one controller, a rotary encoder that functions as volume control that can be bypassed, input selector, upsampling selector and standby button. The monochrome display in the center shows the music playing as shown here but can also show volume or the upsampler setting. Here we find the IC mains inlet, the fuse holder and the power switch. The power selector in the bottom lets you set it for 115 or 230 volts. The red button lets you reset the Wi-Fi settings while the trigger output below can switch other components out of standby and back. Then the digital outputs, AES-EBU, TOSLINK, SPDIF and I2S on HDMI. Do realize that this HDMI connector is not compatible with video equipment. It is meant for DACs that have a digital I2S input on HDMI, according to the PS Audio pinout. Then the LAN connector and the two digital inputs, SPDIF and TOSLINK. On these you can connect other digital sources and have the Stream 9 upsample the signal. That will make the work for the reconstruction filter in the DAC easier. This can lead to a clear sound quality improvement. After unscrewing the lid we see a relatively small circuit board and a lot of empty space. This is to match the cabinet sizes of the preamp and the power amp in the same home stereo series. A review of the preamp and the power amp is due soon. Let's start looking at the Stream 9's inside where the mains power gets in. From there it gets to the voltage switch that can be set from the bottom. It simply switches two primary windings in parallel or series. Before we zoom in, let's mention the cable to the circuit board against the front that holds the display and connects to the rotary encoder. Time to zoom into the main circuit board. We can now see that the shielded toroidal transformer delivers 2 times 6 volts AC 12.5 VA. Next to it this is converted to DC voltage and buffered. Then the signal paths. From the SPDIF and TOSLINK inputs the signals go to the first of two sample rate converters, 
a bespoke new prime chip and from there probably to the streaming unit that is mounted piggyback on the main board and holds the streamer and Wi-Fi radio. It uses link play technology that is also used in, for instance, Gleam and Advanced Parish products. This means that if you use the Omnia receiver app, on which later more, you can also control for instance a Wim Mini in the kitchen, connected to the radio there. The Ethernet connection is probably galvanically separated and interfaced here before going to the streaming board. On that board there can be switched between the inputs or the streaming signal and from there the signal goes to the second sample rate converter that offers upsampling up to 768 kHz PCM or DSD 256. Having a sample rate converter at both the input and the output makes the chance of jitter on the output signal clearly smaller, provided it is designed well. Last but not least there is a small circuit board soldered on top of the main board that holds the Qualcomm Bluetooth system on the chip. When the Stream 9 is connected to the network, the DAC and the power, it is time to install the Omnia receiver app on your smartphone or tablet. Links are in the manual. When started the first time you will be guided through the setup. When that is done you can browse for music. Here you see the options. Preset is where you can store your favorite music amongst all sources including internet radio stations and for instance Spotify. My library brings you to your own music on a hard disk, NAS or computer. Below it the streaming services that are supported. Let's look at my music and go to a home music server. I have three NASs, this time I use Big Sin, which is a Synology DS1819 Plus with DX517 extender. It runs Minim server, which is a DLA server program for audio only. Let's go to Artist to show you that scrolling is ultra fast. Let's go for Hans Zimmer and pick Interstellar, a great album to impress the neighbor with. Lots of movie effects and very well done too. On the Now Playing screen you can select Random Play, Repeat and Set Volume. Mind you, this is the digital volume control on the streamer, not on your amp. It's fine for small adjustments, but in other cases use the volume control on your amp or preamp to keep a sensible gain structure. Since I have a Tidal account, let me show you that and look at what Tidal Rising offers this day. And then the tune in for internet radio. No subscription is needed here. Local stations offer just that, stations I don't know by the way. Opening the menu and select browse gives access to more stations. Let's select by language, go to Europe and select French. Et voilà. Finally let me show you that next to the Stream 9 the app sees the Wii Mini as well. The app is identical to the Wim and Advanced Paris apps, with the exception of some graphic design accents. The Stream 9 was connected to the Holo Audio Sign 2 DAC over a 25 cm 4K HDMI cable. The amp was the Air Acoustics AX520 that was connected to the DAC over Grim Audio SQM cable. The Air drove a pair of PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Stack Audio OVA 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The connection to the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch was over a Network Acoustics Eno system network filter. New is the Rune Nucleus server that was also connected to the Zixel switch over CAT6 patch cable. Further on in the network the Synology DS1819 Plus NAS with DX517 extender running Minim server providing the music to the Omnia receiver app. See my video about my reference setups March 2024 for more info on the network setup. I used both 
the New Prime Omnia Receiver app and the Rune app on an iPad Pro 2. Very good lows with excellent texture was the first to notice. The stereo image was about 80% of what the Aurelic Aries S1 did last week. When no upsampling was used, sibilance sounded clean. When using upsampling, sibilance became slightly less clean. That's not strange, the Holo Audio DAC is a non oversampling type. With oversampling DACs, this might be different depending on the quality of the internal upsampler. Although different in sound character and having the upsampler, I grade the Stream 9 only slightly below the Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad. Being a room addict, I find the Omnia Receiver app like the sibling apps from Wim and Advanced Paris simple. But given the popularity of the Wim streamers, many are happy with it. Don't think that the digital signal coming from the Wim streamers is therefore equal to that of the Stream 9. Provided you use equal quality DAC, amp and speakers, the difference is quite severe. Plus the upsampler might add to that, depending on the type of DAC you use. Many will also appreciate the display. Overall the Stream 9 is a good sounding product and worth the 1295 euros retail price. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. Next week at Friday 5 pm Central European time there will be a new video again. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media, it is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.